ISP stands for Internet Service Provider, which is a company or an organization that provides services for internet access. Access provider provides internet access using telephone cables, modem, ethernet, or fiber optics. Whether we are at home, in the office, in the market, or traveling somewhere, every time we connect to the internet, our device is connected to the internet through an ISP. The first commercial ISP. The first commercial ISP established in Australia and the US in the year 1989, called as The World. It is slowed dial up, but it generated a wide customer base in just two years. DSL. After years of dial up and slow services, DSL was the first step in broadband internet service. This connection carried an internet connection through phone lines at faster speed than dial up. Now let's talk about cable broadband. In the year 1996, cable broadband was introduced and cables TV inf infrastructure to transmit data faster than DSL. Next up, we have fiber optics. Soon after, ISP switched to installing fire optics lines, giving high-speed internet facilities to its subscribed customers. The flexible strands of glass allow data to move at the speed of light. Next, we have satellite. Rural areas still remained unreserved because the cost of installing infrastructure is high. Satellite fills the gaps the rural customer satellite sends signal from space to an antenna on our home. Now we'll see how it works in the basis of division of ISP. Basically, ISP is divided into three tiers. Let's talk about Tier 1, which is also known as Backbone Internet Provider. Tier 1 is the largest ISP company compared to other tiers. It's work to connect other countries. These companies provide internet services by line cables through the sea. Their jobs is to only connect different countries and not with the end user. While the Tier 1 ISPs peer with each other at zero cost for traffic transfer. They charge to lower tier ISPs to allow to transit their network, such as Sprint, Tata Communication, etc. Now let's talk about Tier 2 which is also known as Regional Internet Provider. Tier 2 company is smaller than Tier 1. This company works to provide internet connection to different states or cities of the country. It means that Tier 2 buys services from Tier 1. Tier 2 ISPs peer with each other at a very low cost or no cost at all to expand their global reach. Tier 2 companies such as Comcast, Virgin Media, etc. Lastly, we have Tier 3 which is also known as Local Internet Provider. Tier 3 ISPs are most commonly called Local Provider with Metropolitan or National Reach. This is the smallest tier that works to provide internet services to home, companies, offices and block through routers. That means Tier 3 companies buy internet connection from Tier 2 companies. For example, Hathaway Broadband. Now, ISP uses different techniques such as Mailbox ISP, Hosting ISP, Transit ISP, Virtual ISP, Free ISP, and Wireless ISP. Now, let's take a look at the factors in choosing an ISP. Firstly, we'll talk about bandwidth. The maximum amount of data transmitted over an internet connection is given in an amount of data. Next, we have connection stability. Make sure that they will provide sufficient constant speed. Next up, we have customer volume and traffic. It is very important to check the traffic and how many customers they can have along with how they are maintained. Next up, we have traffic volume during peak hours. Ask your provider if they provide you to high speed during peak hours. Our next point is virtual hosting features. It is a method for hosting multiple domain names on a single server. Next, we'll see capacity of emails box. Compare with others and choose the best one. Next, there is stability and staying power. It should be 24-7 throughout the year connection with high speed of downloading and uploading. Next, we'll see customer service and local support. Whenever needed, assistance, they can resolve your problem quickly, accurately on a first contact. Lastly, we have price. In order for an ISP to make sense for you, it needs to have a good balance between speed and price. Now with all that said, let's try to conclude. While these factors may seem a lot to consider for recommending the most suitable ISP for you, as internet becomes a complete resource of education, entertainment, knowledge, fun, and for every official work. Hence, ISP is now the most essential aspect for accessing internet in everyday life.